Welcome to Information Service Engineering. This is Lecture 3, Natural Language Processing, Part 2. What are we going to do in this lecture? Just look back what we did in the last lecture. There we were starting with Natural Language Processing and we were talking about stuff like phonology and morphology. So you remember morphology was the thing where we discussed how words are going to be constructed and constituted and they are constituted by morphemes and we learned, uh, we learned that there are so-called free morphemes that have a meaning of their own and there are bound morphemes that only make sense if you connect these things together and we learned about affixes, prefixes, suffixes and all the stuff. And then we learned morphological rules, so how we can by derivation, compounding and inflection create new words and create also, let's say, words that are different in meaning. However, since by these techniques, by morphology, of course, um, a word can occur in natural language in rather different appearances, we need something like a normalized form, a lexicon form. And for that, there are techniques to create, let's say, the base form, which is a word stem, or the lexical form, which is a lemma, from an inflected and derivated or compounded uh, word. And these techniques are referred to stemming and lemmatization. We have talked about NLP applications, so what is NLP good for? And we have talked about several techniques in NLP that are important and that are part of any natural language processing pipeline. So keeping that in mind, based on that, we start now talking about the challenges of natural language processing. So what makes natural language processing really difficult? And here you see a small example. So our friend, the son, is saying, I'm a linguist, I love language more than most people. Thinking a little while about that small sentence, you see, hmm, it can be understood in different ways. So this is one of the key points. The same expression, the same word or the same sentence can have different meanings depending on how you read it. So this is ambiguity. We will learn that ambiguity occurs in natural language on many different levels. And exactly this is what makes language so difficult. On the other hand, it's also vice versa. So simply think about it. You can express the same thing, the same subject with many different words. You can paraphrase it. You can use metaphors, whatever. So you can express the same thing in complete different ways. So we have ambiguity on both sides. And this is what really makes natural language so difficult to understand for a computer. And these challenges exactly we are going to address in the first chapter of the next lecture. Since this is difficult, we also have prepared a notebook for you where we can deal and play around a little bit with ambiguity and word senses. And to do that, we have a little helper for you. So one of the tools we are using there is WordNet. This is kind of a dictionary of word senses, rather popular. So we'll, I will talk more about that here in, in the notebook. And uh, we will learn about disambiguation, which is the process of finding out which of the different possible meanings of a word is the correct one. How could we do that? And we see there a rather simple algorithm, which is called the LESC algorithm for disambiguation. But this is really simple, a vanilla baseline algorithm. Okay, so you see what we are doing here are natural language processing experiments. And to find out how well we did, to quantify the quality of our results, we have to perform an evaluation. You see here the typical pipeline for NLP experiments. You start somehow with data acquisition. So the first thing what you do is you get together your data. However, the raw data, if you look at it, usually is not really usable. So this means you have to invest lots of pre-processing time to bring it in a form that you can directly use it. Then you come with your NLP technique, which means you apply a specific model. So often this is uh, related to some machine learning, deep learning model that you are uh, trying to, 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 to apply here. So most things in language you will learn later on are based on statistics and probability. And therefore, we get some results that are most likely probably correct if we are lucky. However, if they are not completely correct, we must have some means to judge, for example, the precision 
which is the correctness of our results, as well as the completeness of our results. So whether we really were able to find out all of the examples that were correct. So this is the recall. So we distinguish here recall and precision to quantifiable measures for quantifying the quality of a result of one of our experiments. And putting both of them together, we then end up in the so-called F1 measure. You see this here also on the slides. Okay, so much for the general NLP experiment. And in the very last section of the lecture, what we do there is we learn here our very first technique in NLP. And these are the so-called regular expressions. Regular expressions are a very nice, let's say, tool that have been already introduced in the 1950s. And uh, they are search patterns. You can define their rather flexible and powerful search patterns. And for example, in the operating system Unix, there exist several rather powerful tools like grep, set, or org, and they all are using regular expressions. Regular expressions also are used in modern day programming languages. So in Java, Py <coughs> sorry, Python, .NET, you will find them there. And we will show you diff different examples here. So this is what we are going to do now in the next lecture. Summing up, we will start with NLP challenges. We will talk about the typical NLP experiment and see how we can quantify our result in evaluation, precision and recall. And then we are going to dive deeper into regular expression and complemented all this will be by one of the notebooks I already talked about to you. So in this notebook will be about NLP ambiguities and resolving ambiguity. So that's the schedule for next week. Sit back, watch and enjoy.